Hi, I'm Adam with Fun Robotics Network, standing here with Team 4272, coming off a wonderful event at the Week 4 Lafayette event. Now, standing here with their robot Swim Shady, they are a fast cycler, a heavily autonomous robot, and they've got some really unique mechanisms in place to help them, you know, score quickly as well as keep their CG really low. Here, I'm behind the bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Okay, so Connor, why don't you start off and tell us a little more about the mechanical aspect of your robot and why you made some of the choices you made. Yeah. So uh, at the start of our robot, we have our coral beater. So our coral intakes from the coral station, then you run it and feeds it into our manipulator. So we have a few unique things about our Peter. First, we have a lot of star wheels on the inside of it. And what we found is, is that star wheels push the coral through while also allowing the coral to spin around it. And we also have mechanism wheels back here, which allows the coral to slide across even easier. So that's been very, very nice. We also have two LIDARs here. The top one here, it senses when the coral enters the feeder and uh, allows the coral to know, allows the robot to know we, we have a coral and it can start driving away. And the bottom one here allows the robot to know once the coral has exited it. it yep. Nice. And now, as we were looking at your robot earlier, you also told us there's another little bit of secret sauce in your in your intake. Yeah. Do you want to tell me a little more about that? Yeah, so we do have the secret sauce. We got some classroom erasers in here. It's we found them to be a very vital part of, of the robot. It's helped to stop jamming. We've had issues with coral getting stuck against our polycarbonate plate here, and the erasers have actually helped. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now moving on into how you score a little more. So you've got a really interesting thing here you call an arm evader, and you talked about a lot of cool ways you keep your center of gravity low, as well as keep it very efficient. Can you tell me a little more about yeah. that? So our, our arm evader, it, our arm evader is a two-stage elevator, and oh, it's enabled. Okay. So it's a two-stage elevator, and, and it has an arm on the end of it. So what's really cool is that our arm is a triple coaxial mechanism. So on one axis, we can rotate the arm, and then we have a through-hole hex shaft with, with pulleys in order to spin our algae wheel. And then we have another pulley on a bearing that goes around the max spline in order to spin our coil. And what's really cool about that is that all of our motors get to be at the bottom of our second stage, which keeps our center of mass really low. And it's been very nice. Another nice benefit of it is that we don't have any wires run to our manipulator, which makes it really easy to swap out. We can just take four bolts and pull it off, put on a new one. And then we get the added benefit of our manipulator can spin in full 360 over and over if we want to. Very cool. So it's, it's good. Cool. Can we maybe see that in action a little bit? Yeah. You want to go up to L2? And then uh, let's go out. You can. Uh, you can just spin it. You can, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So you can see our our coral. It spins. Oh, the pulley, The motor spins the pulley down here, which goes up to the pulley around the max spline, which then goes back down to our coral wheels, and that's what spins it there. Then you want to go to algae. Yeah. Yeah. And then our algae. The motor's in, in the back here, spins a pulley that goes around behind, which runs our, our hex shaft here, which then runs our algae wheels. So it's a little complicated, but it, it works really well. Very cool, very cool. Okay, yeah. so now moving on to the yeah. climb a little bit. Now you took kind of the, the 118 Everybody style, but you've made a lot of your own modifications to make it more consistent and a little mm -hmm. bit better in your eyes. 
Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. So we have our every bot st uh, style climber, except instead of using polycarbonate, we chose to use quarter inch aluminum because we found it, that the aluminum was more sturdy and we were able to pocket it, which saved more weight. So it's very helpful. But then we found alignment is really hard to do. So we added some wings here and it allows the cage to kind of roll into our hooks, which makes alignment even easier. Nice. And then another thing we we found is the cage did not like to center very well. We were coming in diagonally and we wouldn't climb as high. So, so we added a W plate down here and it holds the cage centered on it holds the cage centered on the robot and it had worked really well. We've also added some rubber grommets on the back and it helps to stop the cage from slipping on its way down when we're climbing. Very cool, very cool. So one last little mechanical thing before we pass it off to Andy to talk more about the code. Now a lot of teams have had problems with coral getting stuck yeah. in their robot. It seems you've found a very lightweight way, way to handle that. So what's up with the netting? Is that yeah. the whole sole purpose or? Yes, so our team made all of this red netting here and it's been really nice. It lets the coral kind of just roll off of the robot and it's been great. And another thing we've done back around here, I'll, I'll, is our sponsor panels are actually helping keep coral out. So our panel back here actually stops all coral on the feeder side from coming in. Very cool, very cool, awesome. Okay, so now on to Andy to tell us a little more about the, the, uh, the background and the programming that makes this robot so well. Now you've made a lot of very good software changes to make this robot as efficient and autonomous as possible to the point where you don't even call it a teleop phase anymore, you call it a Tato phase. Yeah. Um, so the most important part about our robot code um, is actually the odometry. And we have something called fused odometry, where we have three limelights. We have one here, one back there by the feeder, and then one on top of the elevator to look up at the barge. Um, and what that allows us to do is that we take the reading from the limelight, and that gives us the position of the robot, and we fuse that with our odometry from our swerve drive. Um, and that allows us to get an exact location at all times. Um, like normally in matches, we'll see four April tags at the same time while going around the field um, to never let our odometry slip. Um, and then back here on our driver station, uh, we have our button panel. What our button panel has, it has 12 buttons that symbolize the reef. We have four buttons, two for each uh, coral station. And we also have the barge along with some arm set points. Um, and what this allows us to do is it allows us to have auto in teleop, or what we call Tato. Um, so what the operator will do in a match is they'll say, I want to go to A, score L4, and then feed from the left side. They'll hit A, they'll go L4, and they'll say left side. And all the driver does is holds a button and it'll let the robot know it can do its thing. Um, we also have auto algae scoring. So the operator can hold one of these two buttons to go to one of the algae set points, and it'll grab the algae, and the driver hits a button, and it'll drive to the position that the operator says and it'll automatically score the algae and everything. Um, so ba our whole game was we spent our summer working on automating driving with a kit bot to practice um, and this kind of all came down to it. We just copied the code right over from that and it worked just fine. Um, but yeah, that's our auto. Very cool, very cool. Going a little more into specifically the Tato aspect, how do you manage to make it to where your teleop period is just that autonomous? Uh, so what we use, we use Path Planner, which most people use to just make their auto paths and make their auto routine. Um, we use it for that along with what's called pathfinding, um, which allows us to take the robot's location on the field, take any obstacles that we don't want the robot hitting, and it will generate a path on the fly and follow that path, um, similar to an auto autonomous routine. We also have what's called approach paths, which are basically just auto paths that are around the reef that allow us to get an exact movement onto scoring, um, where we pathfind to those paths, and then we follow those paths, and then we score, and that's how we play our game. Thank you so much again, Connor, Andy, and Elliot, for showing off your wonderful robot. Good luck as you compete in the Indiana District Championship, and hopefully not only do you go far at this event, you go far if you get the chance to go compete in Houston. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos.
Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at Altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to Altair.com slash contest for further details.